What's up gamers, this is PewDiePie's new mobile game called Pixlings and it's out right now on Android and on iOS and today I'm gonna talk about what this little Swedish boy PewDiePie has been up to with this game, what I like about it, what I dislike about it, and at the end of the video, as always, I've got a nugget of interesting mobile gaming news for you guys. So I would say that we've got a pretty good time cut out for us here today, so let's explore what this game is all about. Because at the core of this game, it's a strategy turn-based RPG where we set up a team and we take that team with us into the game's main campaign mode and right now we are gonna head into level 10 on mission 10 and here near the top we can actually see what sort of units or pixelings will be fighting in this game and we even have a chance of gaining one of these pixelings that we can then use in future battles ourselves if we win this match that is now this is level 10 so it's the highest level i can go into right now and uh, it's probably gonna be a bit tricky but fret not though if we lose, we'll go back in town, we'll go level up our units, we'll make them stronger, we'll open a few loot boxes, and I'll get into all of those systems once we're back again. But for now though, let's see, there might be a chance that we can get away with maybe one star, which we get if we can defeat all the enemies, even with just a, a single unit, a single pixeling still alive. Now, combat in this game is actually quite interesting, because first of all, we get to choose where we want to position our units, and then secondly, we can also reposition them, or we can even switch them out completely as much as we want and as often as we want. So say for example we wanted PewDiePie to attack in the bottom lane, we can simply swap him in here right now, it happens almost immediately, and now PewDiePie will be attacking instead of the puck that was in the bottom row before PewDiePie. Now where we position our pixelings actually also matters, since melee units will always attack the pixeling in the front row middle position, whereas ranged units, such as for example PewDiePie, will attack what's straight in front of them. And so you probably want to change up where your units are located, depending on the enemies you're fighting, depending on how much HP you've got left, and many other factors. And that's what spices this game play up quite a bit. Now as you might have also noticed, we also charge up a mana bar, which can be used to trigger one of two skills that we select before going into combat. I've got with me here a healing skill and a lightning attack. So right now, we actually defeated them without using any of those. Well, I have used the healing skill a couple of times throughout this match, but I never got around to using the lightning attack. But you definitely want to use those as often as you can and at the right time to help yourself survive these battles because they do get very difficult to survive very quickly. I mean, think about it. I'm only at level 10. Well, now we can go on to level 11 and I've already played this game for multiple hours. So it's actually a very slow paced game in that regard. But lastly though, all Pixlings also have a special charge up attack that they automatically use after typically two to four attacks. And we can actually go check out the different Pixlings we've got right here. And underneath them, you can see how many attacks they have to do before they do their special attack. So for example, this ranged assassin unit here called Falcon will only have to do two attacks before he uses his special ability, whereas for example, PewDiePie has to use three attacks. And you can see that indicated by the yellow squares in the bottom of the character preview screen. So before we head into the next battle, I think it's gonna be very beneficial if we could upgrade these guys a bit. So let's level up PewDiePie. That's gonna cost 1500 of this bro fist currency. And I think we can do that twice actually, adding quite a bit of more health and quite a bit of more damage to PewDiePie. And we can do the same for a few other units, such as Bob here, Bob the Awesome Blob, or whatever he is. We can also upgrade him twice. His power, overall power, is now up to 31. What else can we upgrade? We can upgrade our warrior guy here, and we're definitely gonna do that. He's called Gato. Now he has 23 in power, and I think we also might just wanna replace the white puck here with this new eagle, because, you know, America, fuck yeah, right? Sponsy. Oh, it's a sponsor eagle, of course. <laughs> You'll get that if you watch some of um, some of PewDiePie's videos, or if you played some of his previous games on mobile, such as the Tuber Simulator game. This one seems to be a rare unit, and it has a lot of health, lots of damage as well, so this will be very useful to take with us into the next battle. Now, how about we also open up a loot box here, and hopefully that will give us some new units. We got Barry, which is actually a completely new unit, and we got some more of Bob, and we got some coins as well, the Brofist coin, which is what we use to upgrade our heroes. Now we have another small chest we can start opening here that's gonna take four hours to open. This is the main way to get new Pixlings apart from replaying some levels that might give us Pixlings as well, such as, for example, this one here. We can actually automatically instant win this one because we already completed it on three stars, and that might give us 
one, wait, two of PewDiePie, yes, yeah, so two of PewDiePie's pixeling, and we can do that once per day, so once we've gotten that reward, we'll have to wait till tomorrow. Now, as you can see, we're actually wasting quite a bit of energy doing this, though, but now that we've got PewDiePie, let's go have a look at PvP. So for now, there's only unranked PvP, ranked PvP will be coming later on. I'm not that interested in PvP in this game, so I'm not gonna go into a PvP match. It's exactly the same as a single player mode, except that it's, you know, slightly pay to win, because if we go in here, we will, of course, meet players that have somehow paid for progress faster, and that's kind of unfair. So if you want to go for it, PvP is here. I'm glad it's here because I know some players really like PvP. I'm just saying it's not my jam. But there is a guild system though, and I'm quite hyped for what sort of features will be added to that later on. Right now, we can't really do anything other than, well, we can chat with other players, so we can write, hey, bros, right? And that shows up in the guild chat. But there are no other features for now. I do expect that that will be added at a later time. And I'm looking forward to those hopefully very nice social gameplay elements to be added to the game. And then lastly, of course, there's also the shop over here. That's the last menu point. And in here, we can spend real life money to progress faster. We can buy loot boxes and other in-app purchases to just, you know, speed up progress and become stronger a lot faster. So if you want to spend money on the game, you can do that. You don't have to, though. You can remove advertisements for just about eight US dollars, which is a rather expensive in-app purchase, I would say, but it does also give you a rainbow name. <laughs> so it's definitely worth it, right? Definitely worth it. But all kidding aside, of course, there's lots of in-app purchases in a game like this. Now, I don't think they're going to ruin your gameplay experience of the game as long as you stick to the normal campaign modes and you stay away from the PvP gameplay mode. So now that we're in mission 11, I realized that I actually forgot to say before that our pixelings attack automatically. So what we have to do is to make strategic decisions about where to position our units. We have to decide when we want to switch them out, switch in new ones or just switch them around. But attacking happens automatically and there's nothing we have to do on that front. I actually don't mind this combat system and there's lots of things I like about it, but I just really wish it would be a bit more fast paced. I feel like it's a bit of a drag at this point. It goes very slow. It could have easily been sped up to around 200% of the speed and I'd still have enough time to pull off my moves, decide when I want to use a special ability and stuff like that. So I hope that will be changed in the future. Now what really surprised me though is just how grindy this game actually is. I've had to replay all the levels over and over again in an attempt to become powerful enough to just continue to the next level and then even when we can complete the next level we typically only get one star because we haven't grinded enough or we haven't bought enough in our purchases. Maybe that's the issue. So I then have to go back once more and replay the older levels over and over again until maybe I can upgrade that to two star, maybe to a three star, and then eventually we can auto complete that level to at least make the grinding a bit easier. Now, if I could just do that for an hour or maybe two hours and then be done with it, that might actually have been okay. But this is where the energy system kicks in, sadly, because yes, there's an energy system where we have 19 energy, playing a level costs one energy, and auto finishing it costs three energy. So as you can imagine, we'll actually be spending quite a bit of energy very, very quickly in this game. Now, if each level then was a 20 to 30 second experience, I maybe wouldn't mind this so much, but since each level can easily take a few minutes, it becomes very frustrating to grind loot boxes and pixelings through normal gameplay and thus we are nearly forced to use the autocomplete feature. Now let's see if we can win this round though. I feel like we have to be a bit faster at just switching out our units such as we just deployed the Eagle instead of PewDiePie because he was running low on HP and I think that is one of the reasons I'm having a hard time here is because I don't do that often enough. And I also don't think I use my energy often enough to actually attack units. I typically play a bit more defensively and heal my units instead, or my pixelings. But um, maybe we just have to be a bit more aggressive. So let's try that now. Let's hope that, yes, the eagle survived that attack. And actually, I think we might be able to get a two... Wait, none of us died? None of our units died? I think we're getting a three star here. <laughs> yes, flawless completion. Zero deaths, as PewDiePie himself would have said. So at the end of the day, I do feel like this could become a lot of fun if only the combat could be sped up. For example, it could be doubled. And now the positive side effect of that would also be that grinding becomes faster and thus the impact of the energy system would be less severe on us free-to-play players. And all of that would inevitably make this game more entertaining to play. As it stands right now though, I don't think I'll continue playing this game. I'll keep it installed though to see what sort of updates will be added because PewDiePie has always been very good at ensuring that the games he makes in collaboration with a game developer and a publisher continues to receive updates over time. So who knows? Maybe one day this will actually become an amazing game. Let me know what you think about PewDiePie's pix links in the comment section below though and let's get a good discussion going about this game. And then now let's head into that mobile gaming nugget of news 
of the day that I promised at the beginning of this video, which is that Brawlhalla, the platform fighting game that plays pretty much exactly like Super Smash Bros, is now finally coming to Android and iOS. The game's original development studio was acquired by Ubisoft back in 2018, and now it seems that Ubisoft is bringing the game to us mobile gamers with a release date slated for 2020 already. And we're already close to December 2019, so 2020 is just around the corner now. Now, I actually played Brawlhalla when it released on PC back in 2015, I think it was, and I actually really enjoyed it. So here's to hoping that the mobile version will be just as great, that it will come with cross-platform playability, and hopefully no horrible Ubisoft monetization systems. Maybe I'm hoping for too much here, but I'll stay optimistic and I'll be sure to cover the game as soon as it's out so stay tuned for that and with that said that is all for now so until next time just keep gaming stay awesome and i'll see you guys around